Let's look at qualitative or categorized mapping in QGIS 3. In previous videos I talked about attributes in QGIS and if we open up the attribute table for the data we're looking at right now you can see the attributes and you can see um, variety of attributes including the borough, um, the address, and the contributing factors to the, in this case, the collision, the crash that happened, and the type of vehicle. And when you're doing a categorized map of data, it's really useful to open up the attribute table and get a feeling for what might make sense to categorize the data by. Um, in my case, I think both these contributing factors and the vehicle types could be worth looking at. So what I'm going to do is exit out of the attribute table and I'll focus now on the layer styling area. And if you don't have this open, I recommend styling your layers this way. That's going to be under layer view, rather, panels, layer styling, like that. Okay. So by default, your styles are going to be single symbol. We're going to change this to categorized. And you see momentarily that your data disappears. It's just the styling has disappeared. There's no style for the layer right now. What we're going to do is pick a column to categorize by. And I'll start with, um, let's start with the contributing factors. So you select a column and then you need to go to classify. Okay, so this is a lot of categories. It's far too many for a map. I would say stick to at most seven or eight different colored categories. Um, one thing I might do if I um, if I was really interested in making um, making a useful categorized map is I would think about grouping these categories in different ways. For example, I can see that accelerator defective, brakes defective, headlights defective. You can see a theme there, as in there was something defective about the car itself. Um, you can see things that the drivers did. Driver's fault. Lots of driver's fault reasons. I might want to group those. Or I might want to filter to just the ones that were because of something defective and then categorize those. So this might not be the best category just because there are so many colors. Um, you can imagine the legend for this is going to be gigantic. You're not going to be able to find what you're looking for using this category. Let's try another one. Let's try a vehicle type code. And when you change it, you see all of the colors reset to purple. And that's because if we scroll down here, there's, an, there's a bucket for um, for features that don't match any of these values, they all get the same color. And that's because we still have the old categories. We need to classify again and say, yes, I want new categories. Okay, this is a little more manageable. It's a little more still than I might want to include on a map. There are some of these that you could consolidate, for example, other and unknown. 
feel awfully similar to me. Uh, so you might think about consolidating some of these. You might think about um, coloring, say, emergency vehicles similarly, right? Ambulance and fire truck could be similar. Um, livery vehicle and taxi could be similar. Scooter and bicycle could be similar. So you could think about how to reduce these categories even more. Um, while we're here, though, there are ways to change the size of all of the points. If I decided the, the size of the points is a little too small for, for what I'm trying to do, I can come up here to Symbol and Change. And this is going to change all of the symbols. So if I make the size larger, you should see all of them. They're not all getting a little larger because I had selected a bicycle, I think. Yeah. So now, if you don't have any of the categories selected and you come into Symbol and Change, you're changing all of the symbols at once. You can play around with transparency to make it easier to see where there's overlap for example. Um, but if you wanted to change specific colors, if I did want ambulances and fire trucks to have similar colors, I could double click on any of those and come in and start making fire trucks also a green so that they're similar to ambulances. Another thing you can do once you categorize your data is uh, you can turn these on and off by unchecking them. You can also do that in the layer panel. So maybe I just want to see ambulance accidents. Okay. So this can be an effective way of exploring your data also. You can see where generally taxi accidents happen. Maybe no surprise there. Okay. Um, when you're making a print layout, I have another video on print layouts, but I'll make a quick print layout just so you can see um, what happens with the legend. So if I add a new legend here, you're going to see all of the categories, um, even the ones that you've turned off. So you might need to come over to the item properties, uncheck auto update, and remove the ones you don't want. You might also not want your legend to have all caps, so you can either edit here or if you turn on auto update and come back here, you can change that here in this legend column. Double click, ambulance. And that's how it's going to show up in the layers panel, but also back here you might need to turn auto update on and off for it to, to recognize it. Um, great. You can also delete classes here if you need to. Lots of different ways of getting the same thing accomplished, right? Okay. Um, so that's very simple categorizing data um, using QGIS 3 and the st layer styling panel.